Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of Take the Black, the weekly, now twice weekly podcast where myself, Dan Selke, the editor of winnerscoming.net, and Daniel Roman, the other editor of winnerscoming.net, wear matching green shirts and talk about all things sci-fi, fantasy, TV, and movies. And for these special Sunday night episodes, we are going to be breaking down Each episode of House of the Dragon, HBO's new Game of Thrones prequel series, set 200 years before the original show. We've been waiting for three years for it. I'm so glad to see all of you here. And Daniel, I'm glad to be starting this up with you. I am excited to break down episodes with you week after week here reliably at 9.30 p.m. CST and the Winners Made Facebook and YouTube pages. How do you feel about that? I feel so excited about that. I can't (laughs) believe that we're here. The season is started at like, I've been overjoyed to that. We can finally talk about house of the dragon. No more speculating. What will it be like? Will it be good? Will it be bad? Will it be ugly? Now we know, or at least we know about the premiere and I'm excited that we're going to do this every week and talk about the show and you know, with everybody tuning in, it's so great to see all you guys in the chat. It really is. Dan, how are you feeling? House of the Dragon. I feel really good. So you have seen a bunch of them. I've seen the premiere. This is the third time I've seen it. And just to start, I really liked it a lot. I liked it more the more we watched it. This time when I watched it on the TV and I was sarcastically live tweeting, I was also crying at some (laughs) scenes, which I think is always a good scene. I mean, I was getting misty. I was getting yep. misty during the birth scene. I was getting misty during the scene where Viserys yells at his brother to leave. Um, and everyone out there, yep. people seem to be loving it, which I'm really into. And we are going to spoil things, just FYI, because, you know, we've watched it. We want to talk about it and we want to talk about it with you. So if you do not want to be spoiled, um, just change your attitude, want to be spoiled and stick around with us anyway. Um, but my basic yeah, thought is... For this episode, we won't talk beyond it yeah of course yeah no episodes for this is just for the premiere the heirs of the dragon i liked it i liked it a lot like from the start you could uh you know what i want to start by going to the scene just starting it up with the scene that i when i watched it i felt like this was gonna be something important and good and the one that really got me and about two-thirds through it was the birth scene so this episode is yeah. basically about introducing our characters. We have the young Rhaenyra Targaryen, who's the daughter of King Viserys Targaryen, uh, who has no male heirs. And he's got his mm. brother, Damon, who's Matt Smith, the 11th doctor. And he has his wife, Emma Aaron, who is pregnant with a boy. And I was liking the episode. I was enjoying it. I was watching it. I liked um you know, the joust scene was fun. I thought the chemistry was good, but that birth scene Great. was the one where I was kind of riveted and like, this feels like something different. This feels like something new, like Game of Thrones didn't do. The horrifying bit is, of course, that uh, Queen Emma is having this really, really difficult birth and the maester offers her husband, the king, a choice. You can risk both their lives with a natural birth, or you can perform a janky medieval cesarean section and save the baby and doom the mother. I mean, that's what it is. And the king chooses regretfully. You could tell it was hurting him, but he still chose let's kill my wife and take the baby. And it was just, it was horrid. It was horrible. It was really, really agonizing to watch. And that to me was the moment I was like, whoa, awful. Okay. I'm (laughs) like, the show is doing something that feels like it's going to make some conversation. Like I'm really compelled at this point. And that's when I was kind of in. So that for me was the high point of the episode and the selling point. Yeah. I, you know, I would agree with that. It's tough to call something like that a selling point because I totally agree with everything you said. Um, man, that's a, that's a tough scene in general. It's a hard scene to have in a premiere too. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that was at at least as hard, if not harder than just about anything from game of Thrones that I can recall. Um, you know, it's not just that it's a medieval C-section that he, he chooses, we're going to kill my wife and try to save the baby. 
He doesn't even tell her yeah. that's the Game of Thrones. No consultation. He yeah. doesn't even tell her it's happening. He's just mumbling, they're going to take the baby out. And it's, ah. Oh, he's saying, um, like, there's the baby out now. Just like, just like, oh and, 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 and then like omitting, oh, and you're going to die. And I've made this choice for you. That was just yes. incredible. Even this only brief time, like we'd already seen Queen Emma kind of bond with Rhaenyra, her daughter, bond with Viserys. Like they seem to have a good relationship, but the demands of secession kind of call him to put his unborn child above his wife, who he loves. And, you know, we've yeah. seen people say that this show is going to be about partially how a patriarchal society kind of controls women and puts them against each other. And sometimes I could hear something like that and think that maybe it's going to be, it's going to like feel preachy, but this felt yeah. really natural, really just honestly and openly awful and horrific and a very effective way to underline what they're going for. So I was, I was very impressed, not only that they handled it delicately, but they got there so fast. Like, like you said, this is the premiere and yeah. we're already kind of pumping the dramatics up very, very high. Um, it's a good yeah. sign that this show That's seemed the show. That's the midpoint of the episode, even. Yeah. Oh, it definitely is. Like that is, and it got again. Good lord! Like a show that's going supposed to be like it's the an epic the the successor to the epic adventure that was Game of Thrones. Come watch um, a woman die during the cesarean section. Uh, is a bold move, and it's just to me that's that good because I like bold moves, and I think it's. They're not here to be cookie cutter. They're not here to be one size fits all. They're here to be House of the Dragon, whatever it is. And I was really impressed by that. Yeah, I I think, you know, I was both more surprised by how immediately it felt like being back in Westeros. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that open after the, the prologue with the Great Council, that opening shot of Rhaenyra nice, flying yeah. her dragon over King's Landing while there was you know, the Raman Jawadi music that we all know and love from Game of Thrones played in the background. There were just more moments like that where it was like, oh, okay, we're back in Westeros. It feels like it. But then you get to something like the birth scene. And it's like, this is not something that has ever happened in Game of Thrones. And it's hard to imagine it happening because like you said, like we've heard the talk for a while now about how this is a show that's going to examine, um, a, a toxic patriarchy, basically. Mm -hmm. Rhaenyra is named the heir, and there are going to be people who just don't want that to happen just on premise because she's a woman. Um, I I agree with you. Often when you hear that, it, I do, my initial reaction is, I hope this isn't too on the nose because the danger is that it would be easy to be on the nose with something like that. And I think, I think this episode just did such a good job of oh, underlining really that theme so many times like with quiet moments where Viserys is talking about having an heir a male heir while right Rhaenyra there, is yeah. being there. yeah and it just lingers the camera lingers on her face for a second as he's saying it there was that kind of stuff just all throughout the episode and man I loved it um, as, as Manny says uh, the part of the birth brought me back to the red wedding which um, yeah it was Game of Thrones was known for harrowing moments and they delivered one right at the top. I mean, I just don't, I'm, I'm not sure it's just that Game of Thrones wouldn't do it. I can't think of like any show or TV show or movie that I've watched that's really gone there exactly that explicitly. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to have a giant hit, you've got to break yeah. new ground. And this, I just like that it seems like it has something to say right out of the gate. It's such a good sign. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, can I, so I want to, I want to ask you your opinion on something, okay. um, that is a little less heavy than the birth scene. Sure. Okay. Let's um, on. I want to do it first, but yes, let's, let's, we don't have to be all heavy all the time. Yeah, we have to touch on that at first. That's going to be the water cooler <laughs> scene. We didn't have to, I just wanted to because <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um, <laughs> sorry, but sorry. going back to the beginning, okay. <laughs> the, there was no opening credits big epic intro um did like anybody see it has this, yeah did, if you guys out there if you saw opening credits let us know because neither of us did um and game of thrones you know it had this incredibly iconic opening credit sequence mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's just that the premiere didn't do one i we don't know if this show as a whole is going to do one or not. 
but it seems like they kind of were just like, we're not even going to try to top that. We'll just give you this Targaryen logo and you know what's up. What what was your opinion on that? Honestly, if that's the way they're going, I kind of like it Um, to just how do we top the Game of Thrones intro sequence? We're not gonna. We're not even going to try. We're not even going to have anything. Nah. Although, it, it, and 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 Natalie's right. They could start with episode two. That's possible. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's possible they could just do a Breaking Bad or Call Saul thing. Just like have a very bare bones one. We'll see. We'll, we, we, yeah. we'll see what happens. Some folk in here, not fans. Beverly was saying it piss poor. Jackie, not liking the Matt Smith. We can talk about Matt Smith. Because I actually thought yeah. he might have given my favorite performance of the episode. He was definitely strong. So I liked all the acting. Yeah. You know what? You know what I liked? I, I liked how immediately I kind of got the four big, the four big characters, um, Viserys, Rhaenyra, Damon, and Alicent. I liked that scene with Alicent and Rhaenyra in the gods would kind of just like chatting and just kind of gabbing a bit. Ew. He's talking about, I don't just about yeah. cake. It's cute. Um, I liked Damon. <sighs> So I read Fire and Blood, the George R. R. Martin book that this show is based on. And I know that Damon Targaryen, who is Matt Smith and his long wig, people have talked about the shit about the wig, which, you know, it's fair. I yeah. mean, listen, Targaryens, you, someone can have short hair. It's OK. Like not everyone has to have yeah. like long flowing down to the small of your back locks. But anyway, in Fire and Blood, he was such he, he was such an asshole. He came off as like I, I'm reading this book. And everything he does is just, I don't see how to interpret it, except this is a jerk who's doing jerky things. And this first episode, I was sympathizing with him more than I thought I was going to. Like, they've preserved everything about his assholishness. Like, he is cocky. He is, like, talking shit about his wife back in the veil. He is sa- sauntering into small consequences. He is hitting on his niece or whatever that necklace thing was supposed to be. He is yeah. just being a dick at the tourney. And, oh, my God, the bit when he was, like, I think he, like, knocked Allison's brother out of the seat. That was Allison Hightower's older yeah. brother. And then it's like, can I have your favor? Like, what a dick. By tripping her horse, his horse. By tripping the horse. At the same time, yeah. I did sort of feel like I I got it. Like, I understood that he was feeling very sheepish in front of his brother. I love that shouting match between his brother and, and he at the end. What he did really yeah. seem kind of chagrined and like he's failed to live up to his brother's expectations. Um, I was more mixed on him than I thought. And I credit some of that to Matt Smith, who I think that is doing a good yep. job. This is going to be a complex meaty character and if if the birth scene was the scene that's going to be talked about i think damon is the character is going to be talked about because i can already see him producing some strong reactions yeah i mean here we are talking about him as basically Mm -hmm. our first character from the show that we're really discussing so yeah because there are strong reactions in the chat yes there Um, are i think Damon, you know, he does come off as more of a jerk in the book, but I think one thing that this show has done well so far that I'm really hoping for throughout the rest of the season is it's taking these characters who were described, you know, when we see Damon described in the book, there's like a layer of separation because it's not like Damon's point of view. It's mm-hmm. yeah, second or third hand accounts primary accounts for mushroom, whatever of what Damon was like, but you know, the way Damon was described sometimes was at odds with his actions. So like he would be described as doing all this awful stuff. He would still come back around to trying to be loyal to his brother. Um, So I think the show did a good job of taking those implied complexities and putting them front and center. So like Damon, you know, when he has the air for a day scene, which uh, I think Kayla said she loved that there were quotes straight from the book. Um, and yeah, there were a bunch. Him calling his wife uh, the bronze bitch, bronze bitch too, was say, another go ahead. straight out of fire and blood line. Right. Um, Damon, when he gets brought before King Viserys at the end, the first thing he says is, we all grieve in our own way, brother. Yeah. Um, and that sounds like it could so easily be pandering but we saw the scene and we saw that he actually wasn't happy in that scene so that was was true um 
I love how the show is putting, you know, it's making Damon a little more sympathetic at times. And then you have King Viserys, who is a very sympathetic character, Completely. but still ordered his wife to be basically killed against her will. Yes. Um, oh, which is what I just so love. I love that area. Yeah, it's really dialing up, you know, there's no straight good heroic mm-hmm. character in this show. Everyone's going to be complicated. Um, I like Alicent, you know, too. Uh, and as uh, Martha says, that Rhaenyra had some Arya in her, which, yeah, I, I mean, it was all... Um, I there think, were some points where I kind of felt like it was a Game of Thrones quote or moment, just sort of um, kind of highlighted in a different color. Like when Rhaenyra is going to her mother, Emma, and being like, I'd rather ride into battle on a horse. And like, well, that's basically what Arya would say. Or um, when, totally. when Rhaenys Targaryen was uh, at the tournament and she was saying like, uh, most of these guys have never They're known battle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we, which is is full Catelyn Stark, which is full. These are the knights of Wint set somewhere, and, and winter is coming. Like so, th- there were moments I thought were almost a little too close. But then there were stuff like the birth and stuff like Damon that was very removed. And honestly, we never really yeah. had like a close exploration of two brothers before. Like they had like Rob and John and Bran, but they never got a lot of time together. Viserys and Damon seem like a really compelling pair to me. I love that scene of the throne room they had, like the 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 the, the, the yelling back and forth. Who? Yeah, um, I, I forget. The closest we ever had before that was Tyrion and Jaime. They're oh, yeah, kind of the, the brothers I would think of from Game of Thrones, where they're close enough in age. They're both adults. They both make lots of mistakes um, and just see the world in slightly different ways. I yeah, the relationship between Damon and Viserys is so compelling. Like um, did you catch that? So in the scene, I and viewers out there, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the scene with Patty Considine, uh, King Viserys, mm-hmm. where they are looking at like the lesions on his back in his bedroom. Oh yeah, um, there's a there's a slow shot at the beginning of that that is out the window while the bells are chiming. I'm pretty sure that's the window Tom and jumped out of to his death. <laughs> and that framing of that scene, you know, Miguel Sapochnik directed that episode as well. The winds of winter, the framing of that window as it panned back out to King Viserys. Um, that was another, Oh, we're really calling back to game of Thrones moment for me. I didn't think about that. That's funny. <laughs> like that. Some interesting comments about the male eye candy, a little lacking says Jackie and <laughs> is it bad that I miss? It's going to be ent- Matt's- so, like, look, so I, I, I guess the question is, was Game of Thrones popular because people were loved the story or was it popular because they fell in love with Jon Snow and Amelia Clark? Um, yeah, I, I think it was the rare show where it was the former, but I'm curious to see how people react and, 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 and whether it catches on. I don't know. Do you think... <clears throat> I'm curious to, to to see what the responses are in terms of numbers because um, it's not going to be as big as it game as it was, as game of Thrones was toward the end. And again, it is a different story. I do think that my fear about it being a little less fun than Game of Thrones is going to prove prophetic because the material just seems a lot more heavy. But th- that's the kind of show it is. And I mean, like if it's a heavy show and that's the right it, tone for it, that's cool i want it to do what works for it i do wonder yeah. if um, the lack of wise cracking Bronn and Tyrion and the hound uh is or even Arya could just make it uh a little bit of a different flavor than game of thrones was which i mean again is appropriate and Kristen cole is pretty hot says julie yes i'm sure there'll be plenty of hot people here to look at people don't worry about it. it's tv they're not gonna not put good yeah. on tv calm down it's true they just wanted you to know that the show is not going to be just about good looking people it has integrity it's going to be about complicated messy families yeah. that are not all good looking this show's classy mostly good looking in all seriousness those wigs like that's right do you think um, that they'll ever be a Targaryen with short hair? Like, do you? Has anybody thought of that? Of just like having a short I, white blonde wig as opposed to long lion's mane? 
we we've seen them in the trailers. There will be short wigs this oh, season. Oh God, it, it's going to happen for sure. Uh, there there's a short haired Matt Smith in one of the trailers. There is. Um, there is yes. Oh, so I we'll we'll that. see some different wigs. Years are going to pass. People get haircuts. It'll happen. Oh, that's kind of wild because you know where go the hair so go the fans like the hair is very important barometer of any show That's- especially a show like this i'm not saying savannah says any short hair but like somebody somebody th- there's gonna be like 1300 targaryens well, in this I- show someone can have short blonde hair somebody yeah it's just hard to go from from the good long hair to short hair because like look at jamie lannister can anyone honestly say they like Jamie Lannister more after his haircut? And why are you lying to yourself? I haven't really thought about it, honestly. I'll go investigate that later. Um, what else? I, I, someone mentioned Graham McTavish. Uh, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. You go ahead. What do you think of the dragons? I mean, the dragons, you know what I like about the dragons? Is uh, what do you think the, of the dragons? I'll tell you. You know what I like about the dragons is that um, the dragons they like weren't overly played in this one. Like we saw Sarks at the beginning. We saw a sniff snippet of Meraxes, Damon's dragon. I thought, I thought they looked great. Of course they're going to look great. I this the show is so impressive in, you can tell they're kind of um, thinking everything through because I think there's a weaker showrunner. Like someone compared the show to the Witcher up there, which is ridiculous. But if the person who did the Witcher did this show i think the dragons would be there ev- and they had that money they'd be there every other scene they'd be blowing fire up people's butts like you know just every couple of minutes um and this one had a great miraxis glimpse toward the end and it had that great cyrax scene and that's kind of enough because it's it's called house of the dragon but the dragons are the people the targaryens are dragons and the dragons are dragons and if this show is going to succeed we're gonna have to like the characters not just their incredibly expensive cgi mounts so the dragons were there they looked great but i didn't want this to be about the dragons and it wasn't because the show knows better than that yeah i feel like there was both more of the dragon the dragons that i was willing to hope for i i didn't expect it to open basically after the great council with a dragon flight scene um, so seeing that, and then the extended scene of Cyrax landing, Caraxes oh, yeah. at the end, um, and then the, the funeral pyre scene. I, I loved, you know, the details of the dragons are just fantastic. They've done a great job making them look mm-hmm. different, which we know was one of George R. R. Martin's demands of this show is please don't give me a bunch of similar looking dragons. And they are listening to uh, George R. R. Martin for better or worse. I think it's going to be a great idea until it's not until he requests something weird. <laughs> I, yeah. That's, I mean, Jaharis the second. Um, so there, uh, one thing that I loved about this though, that made me think of George R. R. Martin's work more specifically, like the tourney scene with all the pageantry. Oh, oh that was so fun. It was done. That's the kind of thing he describes in his books yeah. so much, in so much detail that we've never really gotten to see, never. like shown on screen with the same type of detail. And I think that kind of love of his material is going to permeate this show. We're going to see mm-hmm. other things like that, that were like George R. R. Martinisms that he describes in, in crazy detail in his books. Um yeah, I, it speaks well to how faithfully they want to adapt his work for this. Tony um, was great. What do you think of Damon sliding down that banister? One of the top five moments from the show, from the episode. Oh, that was so much fun. <laughs> I, you know, my favorite bit was was the sound effect of the metal um, scraping on the armor, like the, like the screech. That was the best part. Um, the tourney and the jousting yeah, was so cool agree. because I, I'm watching it and I realized like, Hold, like, how did we never get a scene like this in eight seasons of Game of Thrones? Because we really didn't. Like, I think there was like a tourney in the first season when they had like eight dollars, but obviously they couldn't do, they couldn't really mount a huge, impressive one. So to see it right out of the gate, 
to like a yes. prototypical Game of Thrones Song of Ice and Fire scene that we actually never really got to see in detail was really cool. The jousting was great. Yeah. I mean, like the high speed cameras, the two horses racing each other, so much fun. And yeah, the tripping was great. The fighting the thing was great. And yes, just again, like kind of thinking of inventive ways to do action. Damon scraping along the median with his armor, making a sound effect. That was really cool. And just a really way to kind of wake you up if you weren't woken up already. So I, I'm looking forward to more of that kind of stuff. Again, it's just yeah, cool it's how okay. they're kind of mining new stuff, even though we've had eight seasons of this and, and just out of the gate, we have some things that we have not seen before pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so one bit of, exciting news that we just got in so we can pass this on. Ooh. So there was no opening credit scene this week. The show mm-hmm. will have an opening credits starting next week. So we'll okay. see what the okay. opening scene, this is since been confirmed, I guess since the, the episode aired, they will have opening credits. Um, can I ask now that we've can. all seen this episode, mm-hmm. what did you think of the song of ice and fire? Mm-hmm twist at the end with Aegon the Conqueror. What uh, we're pretty sure was the high uh, Song of Ice and Fire heresy that was talked about before the show premiered. Do you think it's heresy? Do you think it fits? We know this comes from George R. R. Martin, this twist with Aegon and passing the knowledge down among the Targaryens and him being brought to Westeros by a dream. Did you like it? You think it works? I mean, I will say this. So I knew about that ahead of time just because I looked it up because I couldn't stay away from it. Um, so it's hard to like. Say. So the basic twist is that after uh, Queen Emma dies and Viserys's young male son dies after a day because he's, he's more or less stillborn, not quite, but eh, close, stillborn. Yeah. Um, Viserys names an era his heir and tells her, now that you're my heir, I got to tell you, um, our ancestor, Aegon the Conqueror, yeah, he had a dream and he envisioned the White Walkers invading and he united the kingdoms in part to make sure they were all united when that time came. He was saying he foresaw yeah. the he, he foresaw Game of Thrones season eight and he knew that we had to be in charge in order to stop it. Um, I think it's new information, but it doesn't contradict anything. I think it fits. I guess my big question is, is that just there to have a little Easter egg for the fans and confirm some fan theories? Because it has been a fan theory for a while. Or is that actually yeah. play a part in the story of the show? Like, because yeah, that's a good question. It connects it to the original show. And it connects it to a part of the original show. I think a lot of people aren't really giant fans of, but it does, which is nice. I think my, I I want it now that they've introduced it. I want that to actually play a part. Like I want Renera to struggle with that knowledge. Like, cause I know where it's going. It's like, so when she's makes a decision to, you know, go all in on this war, I want that to be part of the calculus. Cause now they've, I don't want her to just kind of be there and never run up again. Now, now that they've, kind of um, opened that particular Pandora's box. Um, I think it's their responsibility to keep opening it. I don't know where that metaphor goes, but they need to reckon with what they've done now that they've done it. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I feel like now that that's on the chessboard, so to speak. Um, oh, there we go. You know, chessboard. The quest, the qu- yeah, yeah, right. Now, where they're going to take that is an interesting question. Um, I loved mm-hmm. that it gave, you know, just that tiny bit more connective tissue to the original series. And uh, I think Kayla said in the chat, we did know that Aegon had dreams in the books. So this, and Targaryens were known for occasionally having some family members who had prophetic dreams. Um, So I do think that's really fitting. Um, Like, is this the prince that was promised prophecy? Did it come from Aegon's dream? Because in the preview, she fully said, and my son's is the prince of his promise and his song is a song of ice and fire. Like at the end of the episode, that line was in there. Like they are going yeah. for text. Um, yeah. Again, you're right. It's like some people are saying he had dreams. Like to me, this is kind of like the Jon Snow is the son of um, Rhaegar and Lyanna Stark. Like you could have put yeah. this together if you were a close reader. It's not like it's a thing that was completely... Mm-hmm 
off anybody's radar, but it was, it, it, it's never been said like this. So to have it said yeah. was cool. And so far so good. I, I, I just want to see where, where they take it. Yeah, me too. I think the closest hint we really got in the books was uh, the house of uh, what's it called? The, where Daenerys goes in Karth, uh, the house right. of the undying. Yeah, yeah. Um, the name is slipping from me right now, oh, but she sees a know. vision of Rhaegar with his youngest son mm-hmm. where he says, uh, he is the prince who was promised. His is a song of ice and fire. So that's the closest we came to getting a Targaryen really saying those lines in the book. Um, man. Yeah. I think there's so much to be excited about here. It really feels like, for a premiere episode, they really came out of the gate swinging. It was um, a very was a strong sl- pilot. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, it was a little slower, like it, in a good way. Like they didn't feel the need to have crazy action scenes to sell everything. Big. Like there were a lot of subdued, like small council scenes. I think there were like four sub small council scenes in this one Got episode. This meeting. Um, yeah, with marbles now. Apparently, that's a thing. I was going to ask, do you know what the marbles are about? I don't know what the marbles are about. I, was that from the book? I assume the marbles are like, I'm here and now I'm ready to talk. Marbles on the table. Like, but the, I, yeah, like, I, so I was like, there are five of you. Do you need a marble quorum? It's like, it's not hard to like count. Yes. Is that from that's the where book? West that's where Westeros is a minor point. Wrong. <laughs> the marbles. This, this is like Viserys has Dolores and Corpse Valerian has Maeve and they all have different little marbles from there. Yeah, that'd be funny. Oh, brutal. All of them. <laughs> um, a couple of minor points because uh oh, as Zach says, I'm like 10 minutes behind everyone because HBO kept crashing. I did hear HBO Max crashed a lot. Um, I'm sorry about that, everybody. Yeah. And HBO Max is a bit of a um bit of a dumpster fire of a service lately it's been having some problems and i'm sorry to everybody who had mm-hmm. to go through that i actually watched on the good old-fashioned linear tv for this latest thing uh just for old time's sake and that was that was that was kind of fun yeah um a couple of quick minor points it was. i just wanted to bring up julie i don't know what the marbles were about i i, I we should write an article on the marbles what what's what with the marbles for, seriously should. yeah are, are they from the <laughs> books I don't recall. Neither the, do I. I don't recall the marbles being a thing. But now we're going to have to deep dive this and figure it out. Yeah. I am. I wonder if it's some medieval tradition that, it, like, they drew it from somewhere. Mm-hmm. I I have the feeling that they weren't just like you know it would be cool if the small council had marbles. That's got to come marbles. from somewhere. <laughs> like, so, um, so Patrick was like, I pitched them marble stories over and over and they always said no and now that i'm show runner i am getting my marbles marbles <laughs> yeah. uh, us but anyway i wanted to mention yes. really quickly that i liked that, that there were some characters who didn't kind of really pop just yet i thought that corliss valerian and rainius targaryen were kind of in the background for this one my Saria was introduced Same. but not really done a lot yes. with um i liked graham mctavish as harold westerling mostly i liked his scottish Same. accent um, and him in the armor. He didn't really do much, but he was fun. You know who was the stealth breakout character for me with very few lines, but I just kind of liked whenever he was on screen. And I, I, I'm not being sarcastic. Um, I was kind of digging Lyman Beesbury, who is the master of coin. <laughs> like he yeah. had two lines and I laughed at both of them. It was like, I think it was yeah. like when, when Otto and Damon were arguing to the small council and they're like, Bring it, and they're like bringing each other's wives into this. This is a quick shot of Live and Beast. Yeah. going like, oh dear. Like he was just so like <laughs> effectively British affronted and it was just kind of cute. And then later during the tourney, yeah. um, uh, Damon uh, was at the list and Lyman's like, go, turns to a guy and is like, put, like, put, yeah. put, put 50 on Damon, like, just them making a bet. Like, you're fun. I yeah. like you, Lyman Beesbury. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed Lyman Beesberry too. I I totally agree. Stealth favorite from the episode because <laughs> yeah, he had a handful of lines and he made each and every one of them count. Uh-huh. Um, I'm both excited yeah. and dreading to see the full span of Lyman Beesberry on this season of House of the Dragon. Um, yeah, he was great. I I really enjoyed Kristen Cole too. He's another one. Yeah. I for whatever reason I wasn't like yeah, I can't wait to see Kristen Cole. 
but whenever he was on screen or talking, I was paying a little more attention. Um, so I'm excited to see more of him in the coming episodes too. That, that fight right. with him. Is great. I will agree with Julie Davies here, who says that not much chemistry between Corliss and Rainey's it's, it, it's, it's one episode. So I don't yeah, think they were really focused to judge. on, but yeah, I agree. Like as as I thought there was chemistry between um, Allison and Rhaenyra. There was chemistry between Damon and Viserys. I thought there was, I mean, uh, the, the, that scene where Damon and Rhaenyra are both talking in high Valyrian and then Damon puts a necklace creepily on oh, his niece's that. neck was look, I mean, didn't love that. <laughs> I thought it worked in that. I was a little creeped out, um, yes, but it was a little uncomfortable. But yeah, I, I, I agree, yeah. Julie. I, I, I wasn't getting too much of a chemistry set from Corliss and Rainey's, but I'm, it's, it's the first episode. They weren't really the focus, so I'm willing to keep watching to find out about that. And I'm just glad that um, there were some tertiary and secondary characters popping as well as the primary ones. Yeah, totally. I, I think they did a good job. Um, you know, when looking at like that tourney, so in the book, that takes place in a different town for mm-hmm. a different event. Yeah, it it's made in pool to celebrate Viserys being crowned king. So I feel like that's a pretty good like microcosm for how the show is going to be handling, maybe adapting things from the book. Like it's going to take the spirit and maybe the the idea, but it might not be wearing the same exact clothes. It might not be the same setting. Like things might be shifted around just a little bit, but it still feels really faithful. Um, totally. It yeah. It really does. So much good stuff. I, I loved uh, young Rhaenyra and Allison way more than I expected to. I, mm-hmm. Did you catch yeah, yeah, Allison picking her nails? Like, of course. Yeah. Characterization. Like so good. Focused on like the weird, the, the kind of the scratchy thing. She could be really interesting. Yeah. I also, one last thought I had is, is, is pretty much, my last thought of the night, um, the dialogue, um, yeah, kind of a weird journey with me for this one. So the first time I watched the episode was like earlier this week and it seemed a little stiff to me. And then I watched it again to write the review and I, it felt better. I guess I just got used to it because now it didn't bother me much at all. I think it's a little more formal. It sounds a little Shakespeare in the park, which like, Game of Thrones had that too, so it it it, it works. Game of Thrones yeah. also had contrast. Like Game of Thrones had Bronn and Davos Seaworth kind of like being a little more informal. So it was yeah. um it was it was a little hard to get used to, but by the third time around, I was used to it. So I think just a matter of kind of developing an ear for how they're going to talk most of the time in this show. I, I agree with what you were saying about the dialogue in terms of that it might take a little getting used to. I think that's the last thing we were talking about. And I'm um, used to it. Yeah. Yeah. It feels, yeah. It feels a little older, like older yeah. fashioned, which is fitting. We're like 200 yeah. years, roughly 172 years before Daenerys, which I did appreciate that little opening stinger that to let us cute. know where we, that was cute. Right. Yeah. They kind of got rid of the words. Okay. Now, before we go on, I, 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 I have to say like, it makes sense. The dialogue is older because we're earlier Game of Thrones are still medieval times. Like it's, 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 it's all old. I reject that argument, but okay, go on. <laughs> that was, it was on, uh, what was it? Uh, Ryan Condal used a great term for this. It's like a post-classical period Game of Thrones. Uh, okay. We're seeing everything on the downhill. Everyone's roughing it up like Bronn and the slang is more prevalent. Um, all right. Okay. Said- maybe. Sure. <laughs> um, stuff. All right. So, so we're pushing time here. Do we want to end with maybe some predictions for that? What we want to see, what we're interested in. I mean, which is tricky yeah, because what, we've the, both what read the book. Questions we have. Yeah, we got yeah. questions. I mean, okay. So, I I know what happens. So, I, I I'm not going to act like will Allison and the King get closer. Like they're, they're they're definitely going to. I guess I am curious to see if the show can compel me as it goes on some kind of um, side journeys. Like as Damon goes yeah. to fight with Corliss Valerian um, in the Stepstones, like, will that be yeah. as interesting as some of the other stuff? Um, can they get me at invested 
in the Rhaenyra Allison friendship to the point where I'm going to be heartbroken when it ends. Um, and will they bring back that revelation about a on the conqueror? I think the premiere did a good yeah, job of giving us one. a lot, but still leaving a lot to be dripped out. Like we haven't met a lot of the dragons yet. That'll be fun. There are characters like yep. Myceria and Corliss and Rainies and Kristen Cole. who We don't really know that well yet. So that can be developed. I'm, I, I yeah. am, I'm curious what happens next. After tomorrow, I'm probably going to watch the next episode because I want to get this nice. party rolling because I am genuinely interested. How about you, Daniel? Cool. What, what do you what do you predict or what what are you looking <laughs> well, to see in the next six episodes? Okay, so yeah, I can't like we've said. I have seen farther ahead, so I uh-huh. predicting feels like it would be in in bad faith. But the things I'm excited, I'm excited to see more of the dragons. Cause like you mm-hmm. said, it, you know, we, I, I think there are like nine or 10 that are going to be in this first season. Annoyed. Um, and we only met two of them in this episode. So I kind of like that the show is gradually introducing its draconic cast, so to speak. So, um, so I'm excited to get to see them a little bit more and see all these different personalities we've had teased. Um, the Rhaenyra and Allison relationship, I'm right there with, with you in terms of wanting to see if they can really get fans compelled enough to, you know, be sad mm-hmm. when they have yeah. a falling out. Cause if, if you have a falling out, the books, you don't know anything. Yeah. I mean, we, you can probably parse that from the trailers. It makes yeah, it pretty obvious. The a one's going to the other with conflict. a knife. Yeah. That could have been. Yeah. Yeah. So long game, a big part of the conflict is a falling out between them. And I'm excited to see how people respond to that. Um, can the show make its relationships as compelling as something like game of Thrones, um, mm-hmm. where you had all these really compelling relationships. Um, I, I, you know, I want to know if we'll see mushroom. <laughs> I think we can put that out there as a sure uh, in the universe. You know, not prediction, but like uh I'm curious about that. I think season a lot two, of books- he's brought on as a new court jester. Yeah, season two is just the book of mushroom. <laughs> um yeah, I'm curious to see how people take to the the older actors and you know just the the overall reaction to this thing because it feels more focused than game of thrones it like does. yeah it feels like uh you know I, i'm curious if it will reach as broad of an audience just because it it is a little bit more um shakespearean Shakespeare. like you said it's darker it, it doesn't necessarily have the same sprawling cast where everyone can relate to someone like mm-hmm. they're all targaryens there's a lot of aristocrats in this there, there are no bronze, like you said. There um, will be like yeah. a nettles down the road. There will be like a Hugh Hammer down the road, but that'll be then. So we'll see how it does. I'm very yeah. curious too and excited. Curiosity and excitement. And I hope you guys follow yep. along with us every week when uh, we talk through each new episode of House of the Dragon, HBO's Game of Thrones, etc. show here on the Winner is Coming Facebook page, the Winner is Coming YouTube page every Sunday at 9 30 p.m central standard time after the new episode airs we also have um just our weekly take the black shows on wednesdays at 4 p.m cst hope to see you there and uh you can download us too and podcast form our podcasts are available see you have a great night and may fire rain it's a pun